2022 was a tough year for Marvel. It was really tough. In fact, it was their first tough year, partially due to the pandemic, I think messing things up scheduling and production wise, but also because Kevin Feige for some reason felt that he could make Marvel now work, even though it had failed spectacularly in the comics where it was first introduced. So weird to copy bad ga- uh, battle plans or game plans. I mean, even the most loyal MCU fans had trouble defending all of Kevin Feige's decisions. And I saw a lot of you try. But in some cases, you you just threw up your hands and were like, watch what you want to (laughs) watch. Also, Kevin Feige is flooding his own market. Three movies, three shows. Ah, wait till you see what's scheduled for 2023, though. There are rumors that he is aware he needs to pull back, but with the way Hollywood works, with things produced way in advance so they can make their release dates, although, of course, in 2022, Marvel also became infamous for last-minute changes, driving their VFX teams insane, uh, to the point that they actually spoke out against them, anonymously, but still, it was a bad headline. But 2023 is pretty much in the can. I mean, they could tweak it in the, at the last minute as well. But, you know, there's only so many changes you can make. Well, they really changed Doctor Strange, too, at the last minute. But, you know, they only have so much money they can spend over there. And they would have a lot of projects to tweak, as you're about to see. So let's take a look at 2023's MCU projects on the big and small screen. And this is going to be fun. Discuss their odds of success. Ah, and what factors need to hit for them to succeed and what their Achilles heels are for each uh, project. And feel free to play along down below. Again, as I said, this is going to be fun. Uh, Right now, there are three more movies set for 2023 and potentially... Six Disney Plus shows. That's nuts. Or is it? It's actually a surprisingly strong slate of shows. So let's start with movies. I think the weak spot of the 2023 slate. and Because uh, uh, it's really weird. Like 2024 looks much stronger. Like what's supposed to be 2023's big gun of a movie where you're like, ah, oh, that is the event. That's the Marvel event for 2023. All their Marvel events, as you'll see, seem to be on the small screen. But 2024, as you can see here when it comes to movies, is nothing but big guns. It's very weird. I think think it's going to be a rough year for movies uh, for Marvel. I'm curious to hear your thoughts down below. Now let's go over them. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, hitting theaters February 17th, 2023. Uh, After two entries with a very small scope, uh, Ant-Man will shrink down to his smallest size yet to fight Kang in the Quantum Realm. He's been in the Quantum Realm before, but usually, you know, between movies. Uh, And make no mistake, this film, the entire film, rests on Kang. Both Jonathan Major's performance and how much screen time he gets. It better be a lot. Uh, I did hear that they did reshoots to add more Kang. I'm sure they were looking at it like, like more cowbell. It needs more Kang. I loved Major's take on the character in Loki, giving us one of the best season fa- finales on Disney Plus to date, where the big bad actually showed up. It was so incredible. It was, I'll never forget, we watched it live together. It was a fantastic moment. But fans were divided, or at least not all on the same page, with Major's more loopy take on the character. But you know, these are variants. That was one Kang, or we're going to meet a more serious, uh, more uh, more menacing one in this film, in his classic armor, no less. And I gotta say, so far, he looks pretty darn good. Uh, and of course, this is all supposed to continue the journey to Avengers Kang Dynasty in 2025. So will it feel like the MCU finally has some direction again with a big bad that's an overarching threat throughout multiple projects? There are a lot of projects these days. You gotta be a big, a big threat to threaten them all. But Kang is that big, if done correctly. I sure hope that's how we feel after watching this movie. But really, Quantumania, an Ant-Man movie, is where we do this under Peyton Reed's watch? I'm always for people proving, uh, you know, leveling up and doing what we would hope. Let's see. Uh, As for the rest of the cast, it's awfully big. Perhaps too big. I think maybe too big. I know ants are supposed to be a colony. But who's the queen here? Who's the queen? This corner of the MCU has always lacked a a clear leader, in my opinion. I mean, I know Paul Rudd is endearing and hilarious in these movies, and he looks like he will continue to be from the first trailer, the first big trailer for this film. But also, they fooled me already with the last trailers. The trailers for Ant-Man and the Wasp were incredible, but it turned out those were all the good parts of the movie, and the rest of the movie was not good. It was weak. It was like a Disney Plus 
TV movie. Uh, so I'm not getting fooled again. Uh, and also, you can watch Paul Rudd be hilarious, you know, low-key hilarious on Disney Plus at a later date. You know, you don't need to see that multiple times in theaters. Will this movie have the scenes that it needs for you to want to see it multiple times in theaters? I'm nervous. All right, then, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, kicking off the summer in 2023 on May 5th. That's the primo release date, which Marvel has booked until the end of time. Uh, James Gunn has a lot of baggage at this point. His projects after his Twitter scandal, I mean, that seems to have largely blown over, but his projects after it haven't quite hit the same way that they did before that scandal. So has he had a true test? You could argue that he hasn't, so this would be it. So we'll see, we'll see. And then also, he's leading the charge for the, other, for the other team. He'll be very much entrenched in DC, in fact, by the time this movie comes out. Kevin Feige's like, he better do his promotional campaign for this movie. <laughs> and we'll see how James Gunn balances those things. St uh, he'll be asked a lot of DC questions when he's doing the tour, and I think James Gunn would answer those instead of telling people before the cameras roll that please only ask Marvel questions. So we'll see how this press tour goes. Uh, Kevin Feige would be like, did you really just use my press tour to promote DC? And James Gunn will be like, yup. <laughs> you know, thanks for putting me through the ringer, man. But he did rehire him. Feige did rehire him for one more movie. And a special! All right, still, fans love the Guardians of the Galaxy. And with this being Gunn's final entry of the Guardians of the Galaxy and at Marvel, right? At least for now, there should be, who knows what'll happen at DC. There should be major consequences across the board. In fact, Gunn is promising them and uh, here's hoping he delivers. Not every team member is supposed to make it out of this movie alive. And as I said, they filmed, you know, separate deaths so that nobody really knows for sure who's gonna die, uh, except for a very small team in the editorial group. Uh, you know, who are in the edit bay. Uh, and also they're gonna, at the end of the movie, put together a new Guardians of the Galaxy team, or at least, you know, be ready to do that for a new director to take over going forward. Can Guardians of the Galaxy exist without James Gunn? It's so him, it's so his DNA, as we can see as he repeats it everywhere else he goes so far. Uh, let's see, let's see. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy has never been a huge seller of a comic book, and it was never that big before James Gunn tackled it. But they certainly have invested a lot in Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, from movies and specials to theme park uh, attractions. So they're going to have to figure a way to make it work, hopefully. The movie's weak spots. Chris Pratt is still a prime target for a number of people on social media in particular. But Jurassic World Dominion still got to a billion, so we'll see. And also, I have to say, they have seemed to have pulled back on Chris Pratt a little bit in the Guardians of the Galaxy stories. Uh, Adam Warlock, fans have high expectations for this golden boy uh, from the comics. And they were, let's say, surprised when Will Poulter was cast. And I gotta say, the first appearance was not a slam dunk. We weren't like, oh yeah, he's a great choice. We were like, still worried, still nervous. So let's hope that uh, Poulter can prove that Gunn made the right call instead of proving that fans' fears were indeed well-founded. Uh, the female characters, always a, a difficult spot for Gunn. Mantis, to be fair, was fantastic in the holiday special. And Nebula was used quite well by the Russo brothers in Endgame, one of my favorite characters, in fact, in that movie. But can Gamora finally, finally, please, for the love of God, or for the love of Stan Lee, can she finally become the fiercest warrior in the galaxy that she's supposed to be? Show, don't tell. Uh, also, they've, they've gender bent the, the dog Cosmo to be female now, and oh uh, man, that's a potential minefield for Gunn. I hope he's really careful with those jokes. I hope he's really careful. Uh, also on that note, the movie is Rocket Raccoon Centric, who is a huge fan favorite, and that'll hopefully make up for fans not loving Groot's new guy in a suit, despite them swearing it's totally CGI look. I still think it's a guy in a suit. And will Rocket, I mean, I believe that it's fully CGI, but it's weird that they animated him to look like a guy in a suit. And will Rock, I expect the head to come off and Vin Diesel will be standing there. Uh, and will Rocket's girlfriend be an instant fan favorite or a waste of Lady Gaga, who is rumored to voice the character? And James Gunn loves doing that too, even when he's over at DC, having big stars voice these animal characters. Then the Marvels is the final movie. They're not doing a winter, a fall winter movie for uh, 2023. Uh, as they have consistently in the past. So they're doing the Marvels for July 28th, 2023, and I suspect this will be an epic disaster. I'm not sure how the box office will be, but it is gonna be a battlefield of fandom. And I'm, it's, I'm not looking forward to having to go through it. So I hope that maybe it's not, but I suspect that it's going to be. 
From what I'm hearing, the Marvels is almost engineered to upset Marvel's core fandom and instead meant to appeal to fans of things like Steven Universe, the new She-Ra, or Brie Larson. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, in fact, if it was revealed that Larson had a lot to do with the changes to this corner of the MCU as it's very her. Not just very her, but very what she wants her brand to be and what she probably thinks is a great idea, even though nobody watched the Marvels. I mean, Ms. Marvel, which also was kind of cut from a similar cloth and had horrible horrible viewership. I mean, if, if, if I was the Marvel's team and I saw the viewership from Ms. Marvel, I'd be like, I think we should, can we do reshoots, please? That's what I would have said. Uh, in fact, the late July, early August release date is also an indicator that Marvel knows this is a wild card movie because that's a wild card movie release date. Some movies have done quite well then, some not as well. Uh, that's the thing with a wild card. You never know which way it's going to go. Uh, too bad, because the first Captain Marvel was pretty good, especially the more you watch it. And she has awesome powers, especially the way the MCU has kind of like reimagined them. You know, not only keeping her initial strength and in everything in flight, but keeping the binary aspect to the character too. She's very cool visually. And when they have her in other movies like the Avengers, I do appreciate her. I mean, I brought a tear to my eye how powerful she was in Endgame. I was like, that's awesome. And who doesn't love Monica Rambeau and is excited to see her step up and become a superhero outright? I'm excited about that. I hear she has very cool action scenes in this movie. In fact, I believe better action scenes than Captain Marvel. And Brie Larson would be cool with that. I mean, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, it's not really Brie Larson's movie anymore, right? It's the Marvel, so it's all three of them. It would be cool to expand the MCU audience, but... First of all, is that audience big enough to carry a movie all on its own? They couldn't carry a streaming show, as again, Ms. Marvel had very low ratings. And then why can't we have everybody like this movie? Why tick off the core fandom? Why instigate a social media war? I don't want to look at all these angry poster frames, do you? It's really difficult to have to go through. Even for those of us who don't want to partake in all the negativity, why are you going to expose us to it? It's really frustrating. I'm not looking forward to it. We'll see. You know, it reminds me of what happened with Ms. Marvel and She-Hulk, and then also Birds of Prey. I feel it's going to be the same thing. Nia DaCosta, though, if you saw Candyman, which was a little disappointing, but from a directing standpoint, it was excellent. Nia DaCosta is a very exciting and visually vibrant filmmaker. I like her choices a lot. So, and I know that she's really looking after Monica Rambeau here. She really wants to deliver a great character with Monica Rambeau, who hopefully, I believe she'll be called Spectrum. That's what she's called in the recent uh, comic, that, which was pretty good, actually. I've only read the first issue. That's the only one that's come out, but it was pretty good. Uh, anyway, I hope that there's enough cool action in this movie to maybe please Marvel's core fandom so we can all be happy and enjoy the film. A lot of this is very silly, though. It's, like, it's a little bit like Thor Love and Thunder silly, and I think Marvel fans are getting real tired of silly, especially because there's just too much silly. Like a whole planet where it's a musical planet? I don't know, man. All right, all right. I mean, let's, let's see it, but I'm very nervous. All right, now let's go over to series with, yes, six shows expected for 2023, but none of them have an official start date yet. So again, maybe some will move, but would you want them to? Then keep that in mind. This is a very good slate. So we kick off with What If, expected in early 2023. The first season didn't make a huge splash. Animation continues to be a little bit of a tough sell to a broad market, even though it's incredible. Like, for instance, the Star Wars animation doesn't do that well. Uh, and this show did pave the way for Multiverse of Madness, even building on it, but still people didn't watch it. <laughs> uh, it was a moderate hit, though, for the MCU uh, on Disney+, Plus, considering the flops yet to come. Like, it did better than, like, and, uh, and or, to be fair, but uh, She-Hulk and uh, Ms. Marvel in the MCU. Expect more Captain Carter, who is unfortunately less cool after we got to see her in live action. Same for Doctor Strange Supreme, by the way. Every time I'm like, it's like Taco Bell. Uh, and a couple other favorites should return. But the success of this season, I think, will all hinge on whether or not this show ups its game or just delivers more of the same. Then, Secret Invasion, also for early 2023. As the MCU gets sillier and sillier, fans are hungry for a more serious show, like Secret Invasion. This show should be huge, like Marvel Disney Plus Round 1 huge. If, if. Something actually happens. I'm talking like major players revealed to be scrolls. If this is all just one giant tease that doesn't go anywhere and wastes one of the greatest Marvel comic storylines of all time, comic book fans and Marvel fans will understandably be quite upset, myself included. I love this storyline. It was It's like we've been building to this. I'm upset that it doesn't seem to be leading to a movie anytime soon because we already have the next two Avengers movies set. 
let's just hope the series is enough. And on that note, budget. This better not come off as a cheap show where they talk more than have uh, action sequences, and we better see a lot of shape-shifting on camera. We don't need another cheapo She-Hulk where we are left asking ourselves or shouting at our, t our screens, why did you make this if you couldn't afford to do it right? Then, finally, let's hope that the Game of Thrones curse doesn't kick in with poor Amelia Clark as one of the major players. It's real, that curse. That curse is real. Wednesday escaped it with um, uh, Gwendolyn Christie, so there's hope. There's hope, and Amelia Clark is particularly well cast here. Uh, Loki season two, mid-2023. Huge, huge, huge hit. It should be huge. I'm so excited. This is our first live action season two, and it seems that the show is going to go in the direction originally intended. Remember those leaks of concept art? Uh, well, actually, I think they actually showed them at Comic-Con, and then they didn't do it. But with time travel yet again, but showing Loki, I think, in cooler eras. You know, they just kind of briefly stopped off at like a Renaissance fair, and then like, uh, ancient Rome for like a second, which was clearly like a green screen, but is really gonna go to swinging London in the 1970s, at least hopefully other locales as well. But pics from shooting in that location reveal that this season will also be chock full of Easter eggs from the comics to the MCU. Kingo, uh, are we ever gonna see any of these Kingo movies? Come on, Kumail and Johnny is available and wants to do it. I love the Kingo references. I actually live for them. I love them so much, uh, especially because um, India and you know, based, this is based on Bollywood, but India is such huge Marvel fans. How have we not explored this yet? If you want to see more Eternals, I suggest they, suggest they make a Kingo movie, quite frankly. Although, of course, uh, Kumail Nanjiani is of Pakistani descent, but I mean, I don't know, how do you feel about that for those of you who are fans out of India for Marvel? Plus, this will have pop culture references like working at McDonald's. Oh, I love it, it's so great. Season one was perfect. It was on a grand scale. They spent a lot of money on it. It looked amazing. It was dramatic and funny, moving and romantic, and it ended on an amazing cliffhanger. So the only potential problem I see here is the loss of director Kate Heron, a huge, huge loss. She walked off the show because she said she had other stuff that she wanted to do, and I guess she didn't want to be defined by Marvel. I hope she doesn't come to regret that decision and that we don't regret it. But so far, the footage that they've previewed looks pretty awesome. So it seems like the show will be okay. This show is so hot that it's rumored that the TVA and Owen Wilson are jumping to Deadpool 3 as well. Ah, oh, that's going to be so good. All right, then Ironheart, late 2023. This show is also pretty much done filming, although of course it has a ton of special effects as one would expect. So it should definitely come out in 2020, 2023. And true to form, Ryan Coogler did a phenomenal job casting and introducing Riri Williams to the MCU and Black Panther Wakanda forever. Please, Kevin Feige, even if it's not one of his projects, let him do Storm. He is crucial to the success of that character, I feel. I've never liked Riri Williams in the comics. Most people haven't, but now I'm very interested in the character. I liked her a lot in Wakanda Forever. Sure, the suits so far that we've seen in uh, Wakanda, Wakanda Forever and in the set photos are hideous, absolutely hideous, but it's just a prototype. And I have seen her final suit, but you know, I'm not allowed to share it, but it looks right out of the recent comics and I think it looks pretty good. I don't know about the hot pink. It seems very un-Riri Williams as well, but I think, you know, they want it to be comics accurate. Also, our tech-based heroine is going to find herself going up against magic with the Red Hood. And we all love magic at this point, thanks to Wanda in particular. Wanda! With Anthony Ramos donning the cape and wielding the character's classic magic guns. Imagine the end of Iron Fist Season 2, which was such a great tease. And to this day, I still feel kind of bad they didn't get a Season 3 because the end of Season 2 was so good. You were like, finally! And then they were like, bye. Also, rumor is the Red Hood gets his power through a deal with a certain demonic figure. Oh boy, it's finally happening! This reveal will put this show on the map, and the casting, which leaked, but I'm not going to say it here because I'm sorry that it leaked. I feel bad that it leaked, but it's perfect. But beware, it's going to be silly in performance and the look. I've seen the look. It's silly. They've gone with a silly look. Think like Taika Waititi silly, but I'm hoping Ragnarok instead of Love and Thunder. Still, this show has enough going on with it that I think it could be really big. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of layers. There should be a lot of action, a lot of CGI. I think it should be good.
Echo, late 2023 as well. This show seems like a waste of time to me. I'm sorry. Sure, it builds off of Hawkeye and the season finale showdown, showdown, showdown between Maya Lopez and Kingpin. Was that really that big of a cliffhanger with those two? I think we were all so disappointed in Kingpin. We were like, I don't even know if I care at this point. And Daredevil will show up in a few episodes. I told you they were fooling around with Daredevil. I liked him in She-Hulk quite a bit, actually. And I told you it wasn't going to be as dark, and now they've confirmed it. Uh, so we'll see what happens with this. I mean, I, th- I, d- I got to tell you, I did, not, I did not think Vincent D'Onofrio survived the change to the MCU. But Charlie Cox is so freaking charismatic and so perfectly cast, although I thought Vincent D'Onofrio was as well that I still liked him in She-Hulk, and I think he can pull it off. So we'll see what happens here. But I mean, like, don't overload us on a Daredevil that we don't love, especially before Daredevil shows up outright in his own show. Why would you do that? Why would you? It seems ridiculous to me. Like, why are we watching this instead of 18 episodes of Daredevil Born Again? Well, it's because Daredevil Born Again doesn't start filming until early 2023, and therefore won't come out until early 2024, which means Echo is meant to hold us over. And it has to, although I think, and what, make people further nervous about Born Again? I think we should just wait, quite frankly. Uh, so it, also, though, it has to come out in 2023, or it will push back Daredevil Born Again, and nobody wants that. I mean, like, Echo has enough problems, it doesn't need fans to get upset with it for pushing back Daredevil. This show seems light on MCU heavy, he- head, uh, heavy headers, quite frankly. Hawkeye got a huge assist from Yelena Belova and Kingpin, until we saw Kingpin. And surely almost all of Daredevil's Easter eggs will be saved for his own show. He does have 18 episodes to fill. And I do hear they are Easter egg uh and tons of characters. Tons of characters. So they're going to save them for that show. There are also rumors that this show isn't that great. And that's not really going to surprise anybody, I think. I mean, even the first look was just her sitting there look, looking not at all comic booky. She wasn't even in her costume. You were like, what? So, I don't know. Let's see. I, and that's why I think it's set for 2023, even though it was one of the first of these shows to film and it's pretty much done. I think they're trying to fix it. Would Kevin Feige dare shelve Echo? Probably not. I'd shelve it, but probably not. And I, I, I think it could just do more damage than good, quite frankly. And he has enough for 2023. But let's see. I think we have it. If he releases it, I think we have another Ms. Marvel here with extremely low viewership. Uh, except for the episodes where Daredevil shows up, and then there will probably be just a lot of complaining. All right, Agatha, Coven of Chaos, late 2023. Ah, finally, the much-anticipated expansion of the Wanda corner of the MCU. We all thought she'd be stuck in Doctor Strange's corner. Well, I guess stuck. Well, we were, we thought it would be nice before we before WandaVision, and now we're like Wanda deserves her own corner, and she's so successful she's getting it. Not only is this show rumored to adapt the Children's Crusade storyline, finally aging up Billy and Tommy to introduce Wiccan and Speed, Wiccan, probably the most famous and popular LGBT character in all of comics. And they cast the right actor. Wow. But on that note, this is cast to appeal to the majority of Wanda fans with Joe Locke from Heartstopper and Aubrey Plaza and Patty freaking Lapone. They know their audience. They know their audience. See, everything Brie Larson is trying to make Captain Marvel, Wanda is. And yet still is popular with Marvel's core fandom. Ah, Wanda. Wanda! Wanda propelled Multiverse of Madness to almost a billion dollars. It was Wanda. I don't care if you don't think that it was, because you're wrong. It was Wanda. While the other uh, 2022 MCU movies fell considerably shorter of the Billion Dollar Club because no Wanda. Uh, And and finally, there's a female character in the MCU. I would hope that She-Hulk would eventually become this as well, but (laughs) they really hobbled that character with a bad start. But Wanda is finally on par with the male characters in... um, the MCO. Oh, it's I, although I, you know, poor Scarlett Johansson never got a chance to really do show what she could do. And Elena Belova, I think, with Thunderbolts could level up to the same uh, level because she's already immensely popular. But Wanda, she's so powerful. She's so powerful. I love it. And she looks fabulous. It's, she's just great. And this is the show rumored to bring her back to the MCU or at least heavily tease her return. Wonder Man and Vision Quest will also build out the Wanda corner of the MCU after WandaVision was such a huge ratings juggernaut and awards success, more noms than any other Disney Plus show to date. And again, the success of Multiverse of Madness. Wanda! 
On the one hand, though, is there enough room for Agatha in the late in, in the late 2023 uh, schedule? Would Kevin Feige push the show back and dare make fans wait any longer? I don't think so. You know what I think? I think that Agatha Coven of Chaos could be 2023's Wednesday. Very similar shows, uh, even down to the color scheme. Uh, so maybe they might want to change that. Uh, and that came out in late 2023 for Thanksgiving. So if I were Kevin Feige, I'd be like, let's see if I can repeat that success. There's already, uh, you know, the groundwork's already been laid for a mega success. So I think the success of Wednesday almost guarantees that Agatha will come out for maybe Thanksgiving as well. They, you know, Kevin Feige might be like, good idea, Netflix. Thanks. You ink. Honestly, again, I would scrap Echo, and then I would still release all the five other shows back to back in 2023. And by the way, they have to layer in Star Wars shows here and well, as well. And I gotta tell you, while some of the Star Wars shows have been weak, Ahsoka and Andor season two, I don't know if Andor season two will be ready in time, but Ahsoka's gonna be like fire. And we also have Mando season three. That's gonna be crazy. You know, that's good. Disney Plus could use it because they, ha- they had overall a very weak 2022. Uh, I think, and the, this is going to be strong. I think they're going to be strong enough to compete with the other streaming shows, which, of course, as we all know, has become a very uh, streaming services, which, of course, we know has become a very competitive space. Uh, in 2023, I think the Disney Plus shows are stronger than the movies. And I wonder how, how that could affect the Marvel movies box office and what that will mean for Marvel movies going forward. Unless, of course, these shows are all cheap and they don't have enough episodes to do it right. And then we riot because this should be an amazing lineup of shows. So the weak spots to me are Quantum Mania, The Marvels, and Echo. And I think everything else should do pretty well. Uh, we'll see about Guardians of the Galaxy. I think it could be a strong finish. I hope so. Uh, I thought the trailer was pretty good, but I thought it didn't perform as well as expected. Although they did drop it during Brazil Comic Con, which for some reason had trouble resonating for every project, uh, which was very, it was very bizarre. I think that convention still isn't well known enough on a, on a grand, you know, global scale. But then these shows, these shows, except for Echo, I think they all have the potential to be extremely like, I think they could go back to the strength with which they kicked off these Marvel Disney Plus shows. And we were, well, not only will we love to see it, but we're kind of owed it after a crappy 2022. All right, so what do you think? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.